What's up everybody, AJ here with eTrailer. Today, we're gonna to be showing you this Rocky Mountain monorail on this 2020 Santa Fe. First thing you'll notice is it's a single bike bike rack. If you only have one bike, you go to the trails by yourself like I do, this is all you need really. But if you're worried about buying a single bike rack and then all of a sudden needing to carry two bikes if a friend wants to come with you or something like that, you can pop this off and do an add-on of another one and then it carries two bikes. But today we're just gonna focus on the monorail, just one bike. Right out of the gate, I wanna show you, now if you're like me, sometimes you forget stuff in the back of your car. I forgot my helmet before, and instead of taking the bike rack off, and the, the, the bike off, sorry, and the bike rack off, or climb through the back seat, which is kind of a pain, you can actually just tilt it down with a pull of a lever, which is nice. Sometimes they always have a nice lever like that. That's, it's color-coded, you can see it easy. Tilts away, you can open up the back hatch. Get whatever you need. You grab your helmet, cooler, if you forgot to grab one of those before you hit the road, anything. And then put it back in place, you just lift it up and the handle will snap right back in and lock for you. Now it is a platform style bike rack and it holds the bike by the tires, which is pretty awesome. You got this hook up here, padded, holds the front tire and you have a nice strap back here with the combination of this cradle that holds this in place. That means that you're not gonna have any frame contact which is awesome because you're not gonna have to worry about scratches or anything like that on your bike. You know, carbon fibers, bikes are very susceptible to getting scratched or dented with some kind of hanging style or any, any frame contact could cause that. And this one, you're not gonna have that. Keeps it nice and sturdy. See, it's not going anywhere. You don't have to worry about it. Let's go ahead and take the bike off and take a closer look. You wanna start at the back strap here. Push on the tab, then you can release the strap. Always do that first, because you don't want to do the hook first, because then the bike's going to fall and it's still going to be strapped in. Trust me. We'll go ahead and post this trigger back here. That releases and you can slide the hook up. Remove the bike, set it aside over here. Let's take a closer look at uh, the cradle now that it's empty. As you can see, this groove here is for road bikes. They fit right in there, and you saw that bike that we had on here. It was a road bike, so it fit in perfectly. You can also put a mountain bike in there that would be more on this side, you know, outside this groove, but still holds it in there nice and tight with this strap. And it also, you can do a fat tire bike. So it fit in this whole cradle. You add this little addi addition here, addition, excuse me, add that on. Then it can accommodate the bigger tire. And strap it down, your fat tire bike's good to go. Your front cradle here is gonna be the exact same. You can see it accommodates the road bikes mountain bikes, and the fat tire bikes up to five inches. I'm sorry, I forgot to say that earlier. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and fold this down, and I'm gonna show you another cool feature. You can fold this up against the vehicle. That way it takes up less space. But before that, here's the look at the hook. If you didn't see that earlier, this is the trigger I was talking about. Just push that in, and it goes down and up. So that also accommodate any different size tire, like you know, kids' bikes and stuff like that. You can come down here where it needs to be and get it nice and tight and it's not gonna affect the strap or anything. So that's awesome to have that versatility in a bike rack. When you bring the wheel hook back down, you go ahead and hook it down underneath there. That way it takes out less space over here. And speaking of space, I'm gonna go ahead and let's take a look at how much space it's gonna take up from the bumper of your vehicle out to about here. And that looks about like 20 and a half inches so it'll extend the back of your vehicle good to keep in your mind when you know you're backing up or something like that when i first got one put it on the back of my car a small parking spot backing up always want to remember that it's on there so you don't back into somebody else or something like that let's go ahead and show you that fold-up feature i was telling you about just pull this handle again tilt it up towards the vehicle that takes up way less space let's see how much it is now That's about 13 and a half inches. So it saves you a few there. You know, still be mindful that it's on the back of your vehicle and you're backing up in tight parking spots and stuff like that. But it saves way more. You don't have to take the bike rack off every time you get home or something like that. You can leave it on there and maybe you can close your garage if that space is available to you. Now let's check out the closest point the bike rack comes to your vehicle. It's gonna be this cradle here to this bumper. Let's get the tape measure. Looks like three and a quarter is what the space you have here, which is fine. Like that's plenty. This bike rack is on there nice and tight. As you can see, I'll shake the whole vehicle. 
It ain't going anywhere. It's not even coming close to your bumper. You'll be fine. Another important measurement to think about would be ground clearance. So it's from the ground here to the lowest point of the bike rack, which looks to be about there. So let's check that out. Looks like it's about 11 and a quarter. So just keep that in mind when you're going up any inclines, you know, very steep inclines, it might be the only time it's a problem. Otherwise you should be just fine. You can see that it fits our two inch hitch, but it also fits our inch and a quarter, which what we would do is remove this from the hitch unscrew and remove the sleeve and then slide it back into our inch and a quarter and you're good to go. The same bolt works with that. We also have a lock here. That's awesome to have that locks to your vehicle. Uh, it's just a regular bolt that you screw in on this side and it comes with the tool with it so you can tighten it down and get it nice and sturdy on your hitch. Now when talking about security of this bike rack, it also comes with a cable lock. You just bring it down, bring this section here to the post. Actually you loop it through this and around your bike that way it creates this loop that can't be broken you bring this back to the post side you got another lock just like on your hitch which it is also key to like which is awesome you don't have to carry both sets of keys all the time with two different ones that can be a pain you just lock that in the place and you got this secured this is our test course let's start with the slalom this shows side to side action such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering and last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway. As you can probably tell, I'm a fan of this bike rack. This is the one I use on my vehicle at home. It, it's perfect for what everything I need it for. It holds my one bike, but also if I was to get a road bike or a fat tire bike, I wouldn't have to get a new bike rack. The cradles accommodate those. That's awesome. If somebody else wanted to go with me, I could buy the extension and turn it into a two bike rack. So then I have to, again, don't have to buy another bike rack. I can still use this with just the extension. Still good to go. It's got the locking feature that I leave it on the back of my car because I live in an apartment, so I don't have a garage to put it in. I'm not worried about it at all. That about does it for the Rocky Mounts monorail on our 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe.